Hello, welcome to this lecture on uh, polymeric blends. We are uh, in week 4 where we are, we are discussing polymeric materials of uh, different kinds. Uh, we looked at uh, copolymers, uh, we are going to look at blends and uh, also we will uh, take a closer look at composites. And uh, in all of this we are trying to learn concepts uh, which are related to the polymeric materials and their mixtures, whether it is copolymers, blends or composites. And uh, today's lecture, we will uh, first uh, look at uh, briefly what blends are and then uh, look at uh, the concept of partial miscibility. Uh, we will see that uh, there are uh, miscible blends and immiscible blends as well as some blends where there is a range of behavior in terms of full miscibility to partial miscibility to immiscibility. And then we will also look at uh, the context of uh, polymer solvent mixture which is similar uh, in uh, thermodynamic uh, analysis, uh, the concept of theta temperature. So uh, blends are basically uh, mixtures uh, of polymers and uh, both of these polymers can exist themselves as uh, homopolymers, as uh, single polymers, but we mix them in uh, required proportions to optimize or to tune properties. And uh, this mixing can be done by uh, two ways. Uh, we can uh, do melt blending where we take uh, both of the polymers or if it is a blend of three uh, polymers then take all three polymers uh, to the uh, melting uh, temperature and above and then uh, we can do the mixing. And uh, many of the engineering uh, polymers and commodity plastics that we see around us are blended using uh, this method. We could also dissolve both the polymers in a solvent uh, where both the, are soluble and that is called solution blending. So, we make a solution of uh, both the polymers in a solvent and then uh, by evaporating the solvent we can achieve uh, uh, a blend. And uh, many of the biopolymers uh, that are uh, blended are usually water soluble and if they are water soluble then uh, solution blending is an option. Solution blending has also become uh, more important for many of the device applications, uh, whether it is membrane making, whether it is thin coating required for let us say a transistor or a photovoltaic device, then uh, we use uh, solution blending. Uh, one reason is also that many of the polymeric materials which are used for such devices uh, uh, have a melting temperature uh, which is higher than their degradation temperature. So, if we want to uh, take them to a molten state where they can start flowing, degradation reactions start happening. So, therefore, solution blending is a method of uh, preparation, similarly for uh, sensor and actuator devices also. So, uh, from a traditional uh, plastics uh, point of view, uh, melt blending is what is usually done, but from uh, modern devices point of view, solution blending is becoming more and more important. In solution blending, we have a ternary system. So, even if there are two polymers, the third solvent is also there. While in case of melt blending, we are looking at a binary system. Uh, sometimes we may also end up uh, doing reactive blending, in which case we carry out reactions at the same time as blending. And uh, so, uh, in uh, uh, the uh, blending uh, process, uh, we actually cool if it is a melt blending or we evaporate the solvent if it is solution blending and then uh, finally get uh, the product which is the blend. And uh, this uh, polymer uh, blend could be miscible in which case uh, if we have uh, two polymer molecules uh, basically they will be uh, intermixed and there will be molecular level mixing. So, in case of uh, miscible blends we have molecular level mixing. But if we have uh, a case of uh, immiscible blend, then uh, what we will have is uh, two domains. So, if we have let us say an immiscible blend, in that case what we will see is, uh, so let us uh, look at uh, the case of immiscible blend. In this case what will happen is uh, there will be one domain of uh, polymer 1 and uh, another domain of polymer and so within this each domain there will be molecules of one kind. So, molecules of one kind and this one will have molecules of other kind. So, therefore, in this case uh, we have domains and so we have domains 
And if it's partial miscibility, then uh, what we have is uh, in both of these domains, both the polymers will be there. And so uh, generally what we will happen is uh, one of the polymer will be uh, rich and one of the polymer will be lean. So if we have an AB system, so this could be an A rich phase, while uh, the other one could be a A lean. Or if, since it's an AB system, so this is B rich and uh, This one is B lean. So this is for uh, partial miscibility. So we have now uh, all the three possibilities for many of the systems. For example, uh, commercial system of PVC nitride rubber, it's a miscible blend. Uh, we, we have to be uh, careful sometimes uh, when we talk about miscibility and immiscibility and partial miscibility. Uh, because uh, many of these are dependent on the scale with which we talk about and also the overall conditions. So though PVC nitrile rubber is considered a miscible blend, uh, we have seen uh, uh, research where uh, it has been shown that it is partially miscible under some conditions. So therefore, uh, many of these things uh, depend a lot on what is the interaction between two polymers and what are the conditions under which the blend is being formed. And in this lecture and next, we will also try to get a sense of why uh, blending is such a difficult task and uh, how critical the conditions of blending are. So let's uh, just look at one of the questions uh, while we are considering this issue of miscibility in polymeric systems. Uh, so we, we can have a miscible or immiscible blend as we discussed. Uh, if we have an immiscible blend, we can compatibilize it which means uh, A and B, which don't like to mix with each other, we can add another third component, which will then induce some amount of interaction between A and B, and therefore we have made A and B compatible. So therefore this question tries to uh, pose, uh, you know, what is the difference? What are these three different sets of uh, materials? And of course, as we have already seen several times, composites is where we will need to add a, a component which is uh, quite often non-polymeric or in a particle or a fiber form. And so maybe some of you can spot that uh, fume silica is a particle which is added and so that's a PDMS composite. But what about the other three? So what's your uh, uh, guess? Uh, will polyethylene and polypropylene be miscible blends or immiscible blends? If you just consider uh, polyethylene, and polypropylene are chemically very similar hydrocarbons and very similar uh, sets of uh, interactions. So do we expect them to be miscible or immiscible? And you'll be surprised to find that in fact polyethylene and polypropylene are immiscible. And so what causes the immiscibility in polymers? So in general, uh, polymers are immiscible unless there is an interaction which is favorable between the two polymers. And this we will try to understand by looking at thermodynamics of mixing. So in general, uh, we can have a different uh, polymeric uh, system in which this mixing between one component and another component is uh, uh, valid. And so, so this system could be a blend, it could be a polymer solvent system, or it could be a compatibilized system, uh, in which case we add a compatibilizer, uh, which is valid both for a blend or a composite. So for example, in this question here, PDMS and fume silica, if you see both of them are uh, uh, silicon based. So we have uh, siloxane, which is uh, a silicon based uh, polymer and then silica of course. So in this case, compatibilizer in this composite may not be required. But if you have, let's say glass fiber and uh, polyester, then it may be useful to have a compatibilizer. Uh, in terms of the blend systems, uh, we can uh, traditional uh, type of, uh, we could have a plastic mixed in plastic and uh, polycarbonate has been blended with several other uh, plastics to achieve uh, superior performance. Uh, we could have a plastic rubber, in which case the advantages of rubber in terms of improving impact uh, strength can be added or we could just have a rubber rubber blend also. Many times uh, the rubber formulations will have some certain strength in terms of, let's say, damping performance or in terms of weather resistance, but they may lack uh, resistance to acid or some other uh, condition. So therefore, we can uh, blend the two rubber systems to achieve the most optimum performance. 
So in general, in the uh, compatibilizer is a very useful uh, set of chemicals, uh, which could be polymeric or which could be small molecules, which are added to blends and composites. And we'll take a closer look at uh, these in a future lecture. So uh, now let's look at a mixture of uh, A and B. Uh, A and B are the two polymers. And uh, so we would consider what happens when we have partial miscibility or uh, complete miscibility. In case of complete miscibility, A and B basically just intermingle with each other. But if, when we have partial miscibility, then we have, as we discussed, A rich phase and A lean phase. And uh, also, we will have some phase which is continuous and some phase which is dispersed. So generally in a polymer blend, if we look at, depending on the proportion of the uh, components added, we may have certain morphology like this. So this is a term which uh, we have used uh, earlier also and we will continue to use. Uh, it's called morphology or microstructure. How the two polymers A and B are distributed with respect to each other. Uh, if it's a miscible blend, then uh, microstructure is only related to molecular arrangements. But if they split into domains of A rich and domains of B rich phase, then we it is our interest to know where is A rich phase and what is its shape and where is B rich phase and what is its shape. And so quite often we may have continuous and dispersed phases. Uh, whenever we have miscibility in the system, then we have a single TG. So single TG generally implies the segments of two polymers are closely interacting with each other. So whether segmental mobility is present, rubbery phase, and segmental mobility is absent, glassy phase, will happen at the same time. So therefore, there will be only one single TG. On the other hand, if we have domains like this, where uh, the segments uh, are uh, in one domain and uh, segments here are another domain, both of them will uh, undergo glass transition under their own uh, respective uh, thermal conditions. And so in the immiscible case, we will generally have two glass transitions. So this is one way of finding out whether the blend is miscible or immiscible is by trying to see the segmental mobility of the polymers. If they are uh, molecularly mixed with each other, then both of them will have similar segmental mobility and they will undergo only one glass transition. But if they are phase separated, then we will have uh, different uh, glass transition temperatures. The other uh, interesting thing about polymer blends is what if uh, we have crystallization that is possible. So as we know, if it's a molecule uh, and it has to undergo crystallization, chain folding has to happen. Now, what we have is another molecule also. And if it's a miscible blend, then for uh, this crystallization to happen, the uh, red molecule first, first has to get excluded. And then only the chain folding can uh, happen. So therefore, uh, crystallization quite often is much more tricky in case of blends. Uh, there is only some possibility, if, if both the chains are so similar that we can have uh, chain folding of uh, one and then uh, in that uh, another chain can get incorporated, which is uh, B. For this to happen, both A and B need to be exactly same size. Uh, in, uh, uh, in organic crystals also, you might be familiar with that if we add uh, 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 an impurity, which is of an atom of a very different size, then uh, it's not possible for it to go and uh, occupy the lattice positions. But if uh, atoms are of similar size and similar interactions, then it's possible for lattice to be occupied by an impurity. So therefore, co-crystallization is again uh, not very common. And uh, crystallization is in fact quite often suppressed whenever we do blending because of these complications where the other polymer has to be excluded before uh, a single polymer can form crystals. So let's now finish this lecture by uh, just looking at a similar system where it's polymer, the other one is small molecule solvent. So the polymer would be let's say monomer, monomer repeated several times and then a solvent. And uh, we have already seen the two models where uh, we have the expanded chain because uh, in this case, the solvent is uh, basically next to the polymer chain. And so there is a solvation of the polymer chain.
and in this case we have already seen that the size is uh, proportional to molecular weight or molar mass to the power 0. 0.6 and that's why it's called an expanded chain. Now if we look at the other extreme where uh, if we reduce the temperature or if we increase the temperature or we remove the solvent, in uh, such cases what will happen is the polymer uh, would like to start interacting with each other segments and then this will exclude all the solvent molecules. So the solvent molecules in general will be excluded and uh, therefore now what we have is a collapse chain. And in this case, the radius of gyration is uh, much more smaller. That's why it's called a collapse chain. So this is like what happens in case of precipitation where uh, macromolecule would like to interact with other segments of macromolecule and not with the solvents. And in between, uh, what is called theta condition is where we have ideal chain where the macromolecule behaves as if it is not interacting with each other. And in this case, we know that uh, radius of gyration is based on Gaussian uh, chain approximation and the random walk model that we saw earlier. And uh, the size of the molecule is uh, proportional to molecular weight to the power 0.5. So therefore, theta condition is an important uh, condition which tells us about what is the interaction between polymer and solvent. If interaction between polymer and solvent is uh, very favorable, then we will have an expanded chain. If polymer and solvent uh, interactions are not favorable, then we will have a collapse chain. Uh, or in other words, polymer will exclude the solvent uh, from its surrounding. And uh, there is a condition in between where the polymer uh, behaves as if it is not interacting at all and the ideal chain behavior is observed. So, uh, one of the interesting things uh, that you can look up are uh, coacervates. And uh, these have become extremely important in uh, biomedical and drug delivery application. And here, the combination of molecular interactions, macromolecular behavior is very beautifully uh, 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 tuned to achieve a property. So let's say if we have a protein molecule and uh, that may have uh, plus charges on it and uh, then we have a polysaccharide molecule. So we have a protein molecule which is uh, cationic and then a polysaccharide. Both of these are there in our uh, cell systems which have and then of course there is a uh, solvent water. So if we have a ternary system of this kind where there is a, a positively charged macromolecule, negatively charged macromolecule and you have a solvent, what happens to the macromolecular arrangement? Such uh, coacervates are very important for drug delivery and other applications. So in this case, uh, you will be able to see uh, what we have is a polymer-polymer solvent miscibility. And what decides this miscibility is the molecular level interactions. And it's possible that you will have protein polysaccharide complex, which is what is called coacervate, and therefore uh, water will be excluded. Other possibilities, we will only have a protein-rich solution and a polysaccharide-rich solution. Or we have a perfectly miscible system where protein, polysaccharide, and water are extremely uh, uh, well distributed and molecularly mixed throughout. So it's a very interesting system uh, to think in the context of blending of polymers. And uh, so we'll close this lecture and I'm, uh, I'm sure that given that polyethylene, polypropylene are uh, immiscible systems, uh, the, what we need is a favorable interactions. And so the polystyrene and polyphenylene oxide, the benzyl group interactions between the two polymer chains uh, makes it miscible. So you need certain favorable interactions for polymeric systems to be miscible. So with that message, uh, in the next lecture, what we'll try to do is to look at thermodynamics of mixing. Thank you.